In this video, things are going to start getting more interesting. Previously, we accepted user input using the text box. Now, let's make some decisions based on that input and then change how our program executes based on the input of a user. So let's start off by creating a new project. So I'm going to go File, New Project. We're going to call this If Decision. And click OK. And so now it's going to be a rather complicated layout. So it'll take me a moment here to get set up. First, I want to drag and drop a text block into this upper left-hand corner. I'm going to change the text, removing that. And um, we're just going to call this description text block. All right, next, I'm going to drag and drop a text box control onto the designer surface. And I want to resize it because I won't need quite that much space. And I'm going to call this um, input text box. And then I'm going to scroll down and change the text property as well. Next, I need a button control. So we're going to drag and drop a button, move that over to the right a little bit more. And um, I'm going to change this to play and call this the play button. And then finally, I want a text area uh, at the bottom. So I'm going to use another text block. And I'm going to make it large enough to fit a bunch of text. I'm going to change the text wrapping from no wrap to wrap. And uh, also, I'm going to change this to, I'm going to call this the result text block. All right. Finally, I think I'm going to go ahead and set that wrap text wrapping property on this description text block as well. OK. So I think I'm also going to take this opportunity to type into the text property of our description text block uh, some instructions for our little game that we're going to play here. Now, don't expect much. This is not going to be much of a game. <laughs> but it will help us to exercise uh, the if statement that we'll get to here in just a moment. All right, so the next thing I want to do is double click the play button, which will create an event handler for the click event of the play button. And now we'll, I want to write a couple of lines of code here. Whoops, let's call, I think this is input text box dot text. Okay, so I'm going to save and I'm going to go ahead and execute our application. And so I want to type in the number one and hit play. And I get you want a new car. Awesome. Let's go ahead and move back. What happens if we type the number two and hit play? Nothing really changes. So let's just take a moment here and discuss the code up to this point in time. Uh, pretty much the most important lesson for our purposes is the syntax of this if statement that we created here in line number 28. Uh, it's called a decision statement because based on the conditions that we set up, we decide whether to execute a block of code or not. So we change the code that gets executed based on, in this case, the input of the user, but based on some uh, comparison uh, that we evaluate within our if statement. The if statement begins with the keyword if. Next, within parentheses, is the condition that we're going to be evaluated. Here we're evaluating the string username, a variable that we created in the previous line of code to retrieve the value of the text property of the uh, input text box. If that value equals 1, then the very next line of code, line number 29, will be executed, which assigns a value to the text property of 
my uh, of the uh, result text block dot text property. Okay. Uh, notice the double equal sign operator that is probably new to you. It's different than the single equal sign operator. The single equal sign operator is used for assigning values. The double equal sign is used for evaluating whether these two values are equal. So they, it tests for equality. Uh, if we wanted to set the value of the variable user value to one, then we would have used it uh, like this. Okay, but we didn't do that. We used the double equal sign. So does user value contain the string of one? Okay. So whether this is true or false will uh, then determine whether line 29 is executed or not. If this is false, if indeed user value is not one, then this line of code will not be executed. Uh, one other thing that might be a little bit confusing here, in this case we used a shortened form of the if statement and we excluded the opening and closing curly braces that you'll see in most if statements. And the reason is because if you only have a single line of code uh, that needs to be uh, executed after the if statement, then you can omit the curly braces. But if there's more than one line of code, then you'll need to use an open and closing curly braces to define a code block that'll be uh, either all executed if the condition is true or will be skipped if the condition between the parentheses is false. Okay, so uh, I think now we can kind of expand this example. There was a problem with what we did and that was, let's go ahead and run the application one more time. Let's say we type in another number that we haven't accounted for. Nothing really happened, so let's go ahead and fix that now. And the way that we can fix it is through a variation on the if statement, which is an else if statement. So we're going to continue to look at user value and say if user value is equal to two, then we're going to uh, do result text block dot text equals u one a new boat. Else if user value equals three, then result text block dot text equals u1 a new I don't know cat <laughs> maybe not much of a prize for some people okay and then finally what we want to do is if the user did not type in one two or three we want to account for that situation as well so in this case we're going to use just the else statement by itself with no conditions in between meaning that uh, if none of these conditions satisfy uh, are satisfied in our if statement, then go ahead and run this final catch all uh, uh, code block and execute that instead. So in this case, we're going to go my, uh, sorry, result text block text equals uh, sorry, we didn't understand your response, you lose. <laughs> kind of harsh. Okay. All righty. So, now let's run the application one more time and because I always wanted a cat on a game show yay I want a new cat now what happens if I were to type in something like Bob it's not one two or three so how is my application going to respond sorry we didn't understand your response you lose so that else condition caught uh, that final condition where anything goes okay and so that is the purpose of the else okay so the key idea from this lesson is how to use the if statement it's pretty simple right uh, you basically are evaluating two conditions if they are equal then you will execute the code block beneath that portion of the if statement. If it's not correct, then it'll move on, evaluate additional else if statements, or finally an else statement if it exists. If not, then it'll continue on executing code uh, beyond the if statement. So you need to memorize this if statement syntax. It needs to be 
as familiar to you as typing any combination of words that make up a sentence in the English language. Uh, you only memorize it if you get your hands into the code and you start to write uh, your own application. So I want you to start doing that. Follow along and even build your own nonsensical examples just to make sure that you're getting this firmly ensconced in your mind. And we'll pick it back up in the next lesson. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.